we've got built in systems that are just amazing. So we've got this mass FX toolbar, which is the fastest way of adding effects to our objects. So as you can see, we've got very, very simple scene. This is a plane with a little bit extra um, segments. So we're going to increase them even more because the denser your, um, your object is going to be for the simulation, the better result you're going to get. We're going to also use this uh, table that we're going to uh, work with in a second. And we're going to just simply uh, do the very basic setup for close simulation in 3ds Max. In here, uh, once you turn off the Max Effects toolbar, in many cases, you may not have it by right clicking, you can always uh, 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 press X and go for Mass FX toolbar and just uh, press it uh, here. But in, uh, in reality, we're going to be able to just use uh, the, uh, the e basics. And as you can see, uh, it jumps right back. So we're going to open the toolbar. And here we can see this uh, um, first icon. So we're going to hold our left mouse button and we're going to set this object as M clove object. What it means is that right now this object is going to be treated as a dynamic object uh, that's going to be part of our simulation. But to actually make this simulation have any sense, we need to have some colliders. Colliders are objects that are not going to dynamically move, they will allow dynamic objects to uh, collide with them. So uh, from this icon here with uh, this uh, square and circle, we're going to hold our left mouse button and we've got three options. Set object as static rigid body, uh, kinematic rigid body and set this object as a uh, dynamic rigid body. So dynamic rigid body means that this is going to be an object which is also going to be simulated so it is going to be moving. A kinematic object means that we've got some kind of pre-calculated animation for that object. For example, you want a, a bullet to when to go to some kind of clove or a ball hit a net. This is what you go for. So you set the ball to the uh, kinematic rigid body. What we really want to do with the table in this case is set it to a static rigid body. Now, this static rigid body is going to have this weird, um, uh, weird lines appearing. So what's happening now is that this simulation is trying to optimize itself at the very beginning before we even start, it's trying to be smarter than us. Uh, so what happened in this case, uh, is that 3ds Max just in, uh, wants to con um, interpret this object as uh, a little bit more simpler. So it's trying to make it more cylindrical. So the simulation is going to run faster, and it's going to be easier on your system. And we might just leave it as it is. Because if we now open the Mass Effects tools and uh, see how the simulation plays out, uh, we're going to be able to see that it actually will be working quite fine. Uh, although, at the same time, uh, because of uh, this imperfection of our object, and I mean, the uh, starting object, uh, you can tell that some of those parts are intersecting. So we want to go back a little bit. And the shape type, instead of convex, we're going to go for a custom. And in this case, uh, the this objects uh, full shape uh, is going to be calculated as a custom converted shape. So it means that we're going to be using the polygons of that object instead of um, some kind of mesh around it or net around it. So in reality, now the calculation is going to be even slower, but it's going to allow us to get way more detail as long as 3ds Max doesn't really um, decide not to create this custom object. So in this case, we're going to go for original in uh, because well, 3ds Max just decided to not uh, not work as I intended it. Uh, so again, we're going to use this original and you can see that now we've got a lot more precision, way less elements are intersecting. But then again, the animation itself is running way, way slower. Once we click this start simulation, uh, objects are going to be calculated. But if we make too many uh, changes, uh, uh, or uh, press Control Z, 
everything is going to be taken back. So what we can uh, really do to save this simulation is uh, click on bake selected and that's going to create animation keys for each and every second or frame of this animation. But I also prepared this situation. Um, this is a very common problem. You will have, for example, pens or elements in your scene like, uh, for example, fire logs that you want to just uh, add into some kind of fireplace or some kind of uh, storage. So they need to be uh, placed naturally because if you're going to be working with hundreds of objects yes you can stack them one next to another but uh, copying them is not only going to give you a lot of work but it's also going to be less realistic so imagine that we've got hundreds of objects like that uh, or just tens that would be enough to annoy uh, the life of you if you would have to do it uh, more than once in your lifetime so Instead of wasting time on that, we're going to use Mass Effects, uh, Mass Effects once more. But this time, we're going to set up our objects as dynamic rigid bodies. Uh, so those are going to be our dynamic objects. And this is going to be our static rigid body. So it's going to be our container. Again, we can see the, this net um, being created. So this object is just being interpreted as box. We don't want that. So we're going to um, move it into con convex or we're going to just uh, use the original. In this case, I'm going to jump to original. So all the, uh, the edges of our object are going to be selected. You can also see that this capsule uh, is um, being, uh, let's say those cylinders are being treated as capsules. So we don't want that. We want them to be more cylindrical. We don't want them to wobble at the, at the beginning because that's going to um, be a little bit problematic. So we're going to jump into this icon here, which allows us to open Mass Effects tools. And in here, second to last tab is multi object editor. And uh, this is important because it allows us to manipulate multiple objects at the same time. Otherwise, we'd have to go inside each and every um, um, bean that we have and just manipulate it this way. It would take a little bit of time. So in physical mesh, we're instead of capsule, we're going to go for a convex. And in this time, we can also see that the funny mesh is being created around it. This time, it's actually uh, to our advantage. And we're just going to uh, proceed with our animation. So let's just uh, buckle up and start simulation. And what's going to happen now is without crashing through this max, we're able to uh, actually simulate it. And all of those objects are now uh, placed in more natural manner placing them um, manually, especially if we would be working with hundreds of objects would take us quite a lot of time. Uh, but just playing around with objects like this is go going to give us uh, a little bit of an advantage. So for example, in, the, in your case, uh, when uh, uh, Subu, if we just go into, for example, this um, scene, right? We can see that we've got some kind of walnuts or some kind of decoration here. So this might be an object uh, that you want to simulate. Also, uh, some flowers that you want to put in some containers, you may want to place them in a more natural manner. Also simulating some kind of blanket around your sofa might be a really good idea uh, using the cloth simulation. There's a plethora of options in 3ds Max that we will explore. It's just that I wanted to show you that this is something useful, but not essential for your work, but still uh, it's going to save you a little bit of time and a little bit of problems. For example, just uh, simulating books to so they fall a little bit more naturally again, saves you a little bit of time, you don't have to just manually uh, rotate all of them and place them in this chaotic but orderly manner, um, which again, would take you a lot of time while uh, using simulation is going to allow you to create those presets very fast and easily. So this is all I've got prepared for you for today. Also, guys, I'm actually going to add one um, more element. So uh, some of you uh, reported that you've got problems uh, displaying materials in 3ds Max. The reason for it might be uh, the customized uh, setup. So in preferences, you are, you are able to select your viewport 
uh, drivers. So in viewports, we can choose the driver. In many cases, when your computer is a little bit older, or your computer uh, does not have any kind of a graphics card it's just an integrated one uh, sometimes uh, your software is going to go for legacy direct or legacy OpenGL. Uh, this is a little bit different display type check if you can switch it to direct 9 uh, or 11 even that's going to be way better uh, it's just a dip display type in some cases it's going to display some objects differently just to save a little bit of your resources so now, this is it for today. Thank you very much for your attention. Uh, we're going to see each other uh, this Monday. Remember that over the weekend, uh, we also will be supporting you. So guys, thank you very much for your attention and see you next time. Bye-bye.